Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is episode 123. You know, today's guest as Francis Buxton in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Chubby in Teen Wolf. You have seen him in so many of your favorite films and TV shows, including The Naked Gun, A League of Their Own, Leprechaun, and Tim and Eric. Awesome show. Great job. And of course, he was David in the season five episode of Seinfeld, The Dinner Party. Please welcome Mark Holton. Mark, thanks for joining. Uh, nice to be here. And hello to all the Seinfeld fans out there. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, welcome, Mark. So take us back. February 3rd, 1994, The Dinner Party airs on NBC. This is about nine years after, you know, uh, like Tony mentioned, uh, Teen Wolf and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So tell us a little bit about how the role of David came about um, on Seinfeld. Well, um, I don't know exactly if I, you know, what the details are. That's a long time ago. I Usually it was uh, maybe uh, my agent submitted me and uh, they saw that role and thought, oh, yeah, let's bring him in for that. Um, but I really I, I couldn't tell you any details or whatever uh, other than that. Uh, but uh, was you know, there was, a, was there an, uh, do you maybe recall an audition or you kind of just got the gig and showed up? I, I don't remember an audition. There may have been a meeting with the uh, casting. But, uh, you know, it's, it's too far back in the past. Uh, I don't remember having to go to a callback or anything like that. I think maybe um, maybe I, I was able to buy step, uh, sidestep that, <laughs> <laughs> but which is always a nice thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. So you're, you know, one of our favorite episodes of Dinner Party uh, for, for so many reasons. Uh, obviously, you know, your uh, your scenes there with Julie and Jerry, uh, much to do with that. But, um, you know, it was written by Larry David. So just curious, I know you said you might not remember the audition, but do you remember on set, um, you know, you get there, you're you're, you're there for, for, you know, Tabor Reed and the shooting and all that for kind of that that week on set. Um, do you remember any interactions with Larry, you know, considering he wrote the episode was kind of the showrunner. You remember anything that you, that you can recall oh, yeah. about working with Larry David? I think he directed that episode. So, uh, I remember him sitting, um, in the front row of the audience seat, which is, you know, probably a good place to direct from and, uh, you know, going through the blocking rehearsal and then a, a run through and then, uh, bang, you know, showtime. So, uh, you know, had a little time to talk back and forth. And I, I was a big Fridays fan. And so I, you know, I knew, you know, Larry David from then. And of course, you know, uh, Michael Richards uh, as well were uh, part of that cast. And, uh, and some of the, you know, I was telling him about, you know, some of the routines that I remember from that show. Because this was just like, you know, right. You know, you had that on Fridays and then, then you had uh, Saturday Night Live and you had uh, things happening uh, in Atlanta with, uh, you know, Jan Hooks was involved in. So and then Second City TV. So there was a, you know, it was a really uh, great time for um, shows like that. So when he was able to, to transition into, uh, you know, Hollywood, I mean, he really made a big step up. Um, and you know, the rest is history for that guy. You know, he's, he's huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, I was just going to say, you know, you mentioned a lot there. You mentioned Fridays, you mentioned SNL, you mentioned SCTV, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, the other one, the other one is, is the groundlings, right. Where, where Pee Wee came from, I guess. And, and Paul Rubens and, uh, and Phil Hartman and those guys, um, is that, is that how you, you got involved with, with Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Were you in, in that scene, that groundling scene, or you just auditioned for that as well and just got the role? Well, um, uh, groundlings, uh, it, it was a class and the, uh, the class would perform, uh, to the general public, like I think one or two nights a week. Uh, but, but, uh, you know, there were a lot of people that came out of the groundlings that ended up all over the place. Uh, I, I went, you know, I saw their stuff or whatever. I was involved with another improv group in Los Angeles. Not as, not as cool as that, but, uh, um, you know, after, uh, after, you know, I figured out who they were and, you know, it was just a little too late. 
go back and and uh, and do that. But uh, you know, I I've uh, you know uh, known so many people, especially you know people who speak adventure, right? uh, that that did come out of the groundlings, and uh, so uh, no, I was not a groundling there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I mean, just just hearing, going back and hearing you say, "I know you are," but what am I? Back and forth with uh, with Pee Wee always puts a smile on our face. But uh, we digress. Back to Seinfeld, uh, Mark. So tell us, were you a fan of the show? I mean, clearly you had a big career before that, and you know, 1994 was season five, so it was it was kind of at its peak. Um, Thursday nights. What did what did you know about Seinfeld before you? kind of hopped on set well you know i had seen him on uh, doing stand-up on on different talk shows um uh, the first couple of seasons i don't remember watching it that much uh of course you know you got other things going on in your life if it doesn't coincide with that time period you know right. but but once i started catching more and more episodes i was you know and then by the time the soup nazi came around i was totally you know, a total, total fan. <laughs> that is a crowd favorite. Um, so let, let's talk about, you know, speaking of that, you know, on the set, we were obviously, you know, like I said, we love that episode dinner party and, and, and your, your scenes there were with Jerry and Julia, um, uh, particularly your facial expressions, I think really steal the entire scene, to be honest with you. If, if you focus it on you, on those scenes, you're, you're giving a look like, you know, you know, B Barbara Benedict there, who's, he doesn't seem like the most pleasant woman. You're, 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 you know, your, your wife in, in the scene. Uh, she definitely has a, has a tone to her that seems like she might be tough to live with. And, and you certainly, uh, project that with your facial expressions, especially when you're walking out, you kind of give it a look like, Oh geez, I, I got to go home with this woman. Like I just kind of talk us, talk us through your, your thought process and in, in where you were with that scene and kind of playing this guy who runs into these people in a bakery and realize you're going to see each other later, but yet now you're in this fight and there's just this whole dynamic going on. It's just a great scene. Well, I mean, it was, it was written as an awkward situation and everybody played it to, to the hilt uh, and, you know, to get, you know, every ounce of, of uh, awkwardness out of it that, that was there. And uh, <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the, the couple that uh, ends up getting the chocolate vodka. And uh, I don't know if you've uh, encountered this with your fans, but most people don't refer to this episode as uh, the dinner party. They refer to it as the chocolate bobcat episode. Uh, yeah, and uh, we had the uh, we had the link. No, it's, I still run into people that go, "Oh, the chocolate bobcat." <laughs> we had the late great uh, Catherine Cates uh, on our program, who was serving the bob. Because I don't know if you have any recollection uh, of working with her um, at all, Mark. No, I don't. No. So tell us a little bit about like kind of that chemistry. We, we said, I know you did a lot of work with Jerry. You did a American Express commercial with him. Was that, that was post Seinfeld? Um, yes, I think so. Uh, and uh, I, I remember, um, in fact, recently, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll just do it this way. Recently, um, I heard uh, Jerry Seinfeld talking about, doing those commercials and in that uh, earlier part of his career. <clears throat> and uh, I guess he, he met with the CEO and uh, CEO said, well, you know, here's my American express card. And Jerry goes, I want one of those. And the guy said, well, there's only one of these. And he goes, I want one. <laughs> and he got one. Wow. So, uh, you know, I always thought that was really cool. He was just a really cool guy. Uh, when I would go out, uh, you know, take a break or whatever during that uh, episode, uh, he had his uh, beetle parked right in front of the doors with a security guard, uh, undercover security guard. And uh, I was looking at I'm going, my God, that is one of the hottest looking bugs I've ever seen in my life. Pardon me, but it was a Carmen, 
I don't know if that means it was built in a Carmen factory or designed by Carmen, but there was just something a little different and special about that car. And then, you know, years later, my God, he's got every car in the universe in his collection. Right. And of course, uh, you know, who, who doesn't love uh, uh, comedians, coffee and cars, which, uh, which I, I love that show. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely great to see him uh, kind of continuing on with that theme with the cars. And uh, um, the interesting thing, too, is uh, I think you were also in um, I, I know you didn't have any scenes with him in Seinfeld, per se, but you were in uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle with Jason Alexander. Was there any um, any any talk there around uh, your Seinfeld appearance, perhaps? I don't know. Probably not. But just curious. What was your take on Jason Alexander, whether on Seinfeld or working with him on on Rocky and Bullwinkle? If you had any 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 uh, interactions there, uh, you know we're big big Jason fans, George fans. Uh, he, he was uh, he was doing I think uh, Frito Lay commercials, and I I think I ended up running into him uh, maybe twice because they they did a lot of he did he did a, a pretty long campaign, and I happened to. I know I did at least one because I remember running into him, maybe two. And then, of course, uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle after that. And that's the last time I saw him. But, uh, yeah, he was he was a pretty good boardist. So you, Mark, you were on a ton of sets your whole career. What do you remember about the Seinfeld set that maybe was a little different, that made it kind of a step above what you typically were, were used to. I know you said Larry was kind of in the front row. He seemed to be controlling mm-hmm. things, but we'd love to just hear kind of, kind of the vibe on the set and, you know, what made that show so great? Well, um, of course, uh, I, I, I didn't have, uh, you know, uh, an eye line or whatever uh, of, uh, of what happened outside of my scene. But it was uh, it was pretty much uh, everybody showed up. Everybody knew exactly what they wanted to do. Got the blocking down, and then uh, it was it just happened. I don't remember there being you know a lot of different takes, or I really don't remember there being anything but one take, except maybe you know to readjust and, and reset cameras or something like that. Or, but uh, it was it was just a smooth machine the way it ran for me. That was my experience anyway. Yeah, we've heard that term machine a few times. It seems like they were, especially at that point, like like we mentioned, season five, they were running on all cylinders. Um, you know, it's interesting. We, we talked about Jerry and Catherine Cates, who, who was in the scene with you as well. But, uh, you know, Julia Louise Dreyfus is in that scene, and she's great in that scene with, with you and uh, – Barbara Benedict there. I mean, what, what can you tell us? I mean, even, even if it was not during shooting, maybe, maybe off, off camera, but just like kind of working with Julie. I mean, we've heard some great things about her as well. I don't know if you remember, you know, is there anything in that scene that we didn't see that didn't air or any, anything you remember about working with Julia where, um, you know, maybe just uh, that you kind of took with you as you went on. Uh, I had run into her. Uh, I think I ran into her a handful of times outside of sound Soundville. And every time I did, she was always, um, the term I would use is effervescent. You know, she kind of lit up a room when she came in. She was just fine and seemed like she was genuinely happy. Uh, So I I loved, you know, the chance to work with her as as well. I mean, you know, work with both of them at the same time together, you know, in this, uh, you know, two couples pitted against each other. I I can't imagine, uh, you know, uh, another episode of uh, Seinfeld that uh, would have been any more rewarding. So how does a how does a guy from Oklahoma prepare himself to you know you know be in that New York City bakery? Is Oklahoma have the same process with the tickets and all that stuff, uh, Mark? <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I had been to New York uh, every spring. Uh, during my college years, so I I knew pretty much that diner and other diners like it, and uh, and Manhattan and and uh, and places in in New York uh, that were you know very similar. So yeah, I mean I I I I, I had been there, you know, and and uh, you know 
was a complete, uh, you know, fool for anything with pastrami on it. So, uh, <laughs> Late night coffee after you know drinking my brains out at the Sardis or something. You know? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I, I actually I had been to uh, uh, New York. I had never been to L.A. Uh, when I jumped in my car and decided to move half a continent away, and I uh, had never been there before. Uh, and but the reason I did that was because I, I knew myself psychologically, being from a, a small town, uh, it was going to be a lot easier. Uh, to rub uh, bumpers and elbows. But, ah, uh, good point. Yeah. Um, you know, more recently, uh, I mean, like we just, like our just kind of touched on, you've been in so many things, uh, you know, so many memorable things. Um, and, and more recently, I mean, you were involved with uh, Tim and Eric uh, show. Um, which I know is is kind of a cult cult classic with with, with com- comedy fans. Uh, how, how did that come about? I'm just curious how, how you got kind of, uh, worked into those guys and onto that show, that Tim and Eric, uh, great, uh, awesome show. My sons, when, when we shot the, the poop, poop tube, my sons would watch it and I would, I just would shake my head and go, uh, this is not a good influence on my sons. This is, this is, too, it's funny. It's hilarious. And they were cracking up. So, so what do you say? You know, you, you just have to go with it. And then I, I got the call and they, you know, asked me to come in and <laughs> and do this, uh, you know, ridiculous commercial. And I thought, what the hell? <laughs> um, you know, it, it, if it's, uh, you know, if it's a day's work and it's fun and it, it pays some bills, what the hell? And, uh, you know, the damn thing's still running, you know. So... <laughs> It's not something I uh, would put uh, number one on my resume, but it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was just a, a kind of a, a, just a strange little commercial. So speaking That's of awesome. number, so speaking of number one on your resume, you've clearly, you've been in some iconic productions, right? We mentioned uh, Pee Wee, Teen Wolf. Uh, I love the one line in uh, Naked Gun, Enrico Palazzo. I mean, it's such just memorable moments you've been a part of Hollywood. I'm just curious from your perspective, what, which one are you a most recognized for or B uh, most proud of? Uh, most recognized would be Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Teen Wolf. What I'm most proud of is a league of their own. Hands down. Wow. All right. Yeah. Well, Seinfeld fans might debate you on that. They might think you're most recognizable from the dinner party or the, the Bobka episode, as you say. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I had a uh, I had a doctor uh, in uh, when I was living, still living in California. And every time I would see him, uh, he had seen the episode again. I, I don't know. I guess they just ran it and ran it. And they're still running it. You know, he would he would just go on and on about the chocolate vodka, uh, and uh, and I would just crack up because I don't think he had seen anything else I had done except the chocolate vodka scene, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is is cool with me. He was he was a you know uh, a great guy and loved his Seinfeld. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, you just mentioned League of the Wrong. I mean, that that's you know Penny Marshall, obviously uh, iconic uh, director, and and uh, that that movie is uh, you know obviously up there. With Tom Hanks and everything else. So that's great to hear too. Um, the uh, you know just just kind of getting back to the Seinfeld. I know um, I know it might be hard. It's a long time ago, but we always like to kind of get at least uh, get a sense for um, you know what what it was like afterwards. Um, a lot of times, you know, Seinfeld was such a big hit, especially when you're on season five, it, it kind of was a, one of the bigger episodes. Um, did you notice any type of, any type of kind of bump or, or, or anything like that, where it was like, Oh, you know, things are kind of, you know, sh- you know, shifting for you, opening up anything like that, where it was like after the show aired, not, not so much recognized, like we just talked about, but more professionally, um, you know, having Seinfeld on the resume stamp probably helped out a little bit too. Uh, we're guessing. Did you, uh, did you kind of feel that at all? Um, not really. I mean, I, I, I don't, I can't give you a, a specific instance of whatever, but there's, there's shit I'm just now finding out about now, 
<laughs> that uh, supposedly, you know, is common knowledge. And I'm going, really? I've never heard that before. So, uh, you know, oftentimes we're, we're the last ones to know. So, uh, you know, I, I, the only, you know, th thing I can tell you is after I did uh, a, 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 a naked gun, uh, I, I hadn't seen it yet. And I had a guy pull over. I was either on Sunset or Hollywood just walking down the sidewalk. And the guy pulled over and rolled his window down and said, look, it's the Regal Palazzo. Hey, man. <laughs> and drove off. I went, what the <laughs> hell was that? And I'm still going, what the hell was that? No, it was, uh, you, you never know. I mean, um, th there's there's so much to, uh, uh, you know, so many years to cover there, the whatever, where I, I was just in complete, complete darkness before I started doing conventions. But that's got to, I mean, that's got to make you feel great when someone just comes up and kind of does something like that off. off oh, yeah. It's, and, uh, you know, yeah, we, you know, we mentioned Tom Hanks, obviously Jerry Seinfeld. He worked with some just icons in the industry. Be remiss not to mention uh, Michael J. Fox, you know, yeah. one of my favorite movies growing up, Teen Wolf. But, you know, I think it holds a special place for any of those 80s kids. But uh, what can you tell us about Michael? What kind of guy was he? And working with him what was that like well first of all i never worked with tom hanks i never met him i never met madonna because they weren't in the scene i was you know later in life uh, right, when right. the ladies were inducted into the baseball hall of fame <laughs> but that is a common question how did you like working with tom hanks what was madonna <laughs> like and i went i never worked with him wait a minute you know, and then, you know, I've had some, oh, that's right, yeah. You know, Tom Hanks' character was dead by that time uh, in the, you know, the timeline of the film. But uh, anyway, yeah, so you're, you're, you want to know about Michael. Um, Michael was a lot of fun. He was a great guy. He was, uh, you know, helped me uh, develop that character out of a, a little, you know, a nothingness pretty much in the script. Uh, you know, one little scene uh, back and forth, you know, with, with the the locker and uh, it, and it just kind of grew from there. And the, and the director was on board. So, you know, he, they would say, well, what if Chubby did this? You know, they're trying to work around something. Well, how are we going to reveal this? How are we going to do that? I know. Let Chubby do it. He goes, that's right. Yeah, whatever. And so it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And the next thing I know, uh, I'm being carried on people's shoulders at the end of the film. So it was just a mind blower. Um, and uh, Michael was doing uh, Back to the Future at the same time. So, you know, at the end of these really long days, running back and forth uh, on that basketball court, you know, they'd whisk Michael off to his trailer and then we'd go out and take a breather. And all of a sudden he's sprinting out to get in this uh, mile long black limo and, you know, going to continue uh, uh, a film on uh, at the same time, simultaneously as, as when we were wrapping up Team Wolf. Wow. So that was a very special time for him. Uh, uh, Michael, I don't know if a lot of people know this, you know, when he came to Hollywood, he, he was still a, a kid. And I don't know if, uh, if he, he had, I know he had an apartment very near, a, a pioneer chicken, which is like a, you know, a walk up uh, place. I don't, there's nowhere to sit down inside. So usually there's a picnic table outside. And I don't know if he was uh, trying to get a, a, a phone installed in his apartment or how long he, he actually did this. But, but the, the thought of him going down to uh, this pioneer chicken place and getting something to drink and sitting at that picnic table and watching the phone booth right on the corner and listening for it to ring, hoping nobody would pick it up if it did, because that's how he was keeping in touch with his agent. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's an old, old school Hollywood kind of story. Um, yeah. And then you, and you, and then you see uh, in just a, a very short time after those days, so yeah, man, he he paid his dues just like anybody else, and uh, uh, worked hard. And, uh, he um, 
deserved uh, every bit of success that he got. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've heard, I kind of heard that working on two things at the same time with him. I never heard the one you just told though, the, the payphone story. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's a tough game, right? Everyone, uh, works, th- works their way through. And, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's always going to be a grind, but, um, I'm curious, um, the dinner party scenes with, um, you know, we, we touched on Jerry, we touched on, uh, on Julia sort of your, you know, your, key scenes there and i mentioned your facial expressions but i can't which i can't get over i love i love the uh the looks you give uh you know you get the, the jerry kind of like the when you you know you and jerry kind of recognize each other you both give those kind of looks and then you give uh you give that eye roll when when elaine's talking uh just really 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 good stuff i'm just curious you know during the um you know the actual uh shooting that day um more so the, the the that party where you beat them to the party, right? You're saying we'll get there first, and we'll talk about you. That was, I always love that line where Elaine's like, "We're gonna get to the party. We're gonna tell everyone how bad you are," and you guys are like, well, "We'll get in there first. We'll tell how bad you are, right?" Which is great. And then the end, they just kind of knock on the door and hand like, "Here's your wine. Here's your here's your rye. You know, here's your babka," and they get out of there. W- was there anything shot else that you were actually at the party, kind of talking about them, or I know I was picturing you guys behind the door like waving, like, ha ha, we got here, like kind of making fun of Elaine and Jerry, but that, it never actually happened for the viewer, but I'm wondering if it happened for, for you. Were you actually a part of that? Anything after your scene, I guess, is my question. No, I, I, well, I would have to go back and watch it. Um, again, I haven't seen it in many years, the whole episode. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, maybe one of the reasons why it, it works so well is because your imagination perhaps uh, was. Uh, you know, better than anything they could have shown you. And, uh, and, you know, it was, it was probably a, a time limit concern there. So I don't know. It could be, could be a lot of, a lot of stuff. And you know what, when you asked me to come on here, I said, it's going to be a really short interview. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry if I'm disappointing you, uh, but uh, you, know, you were warned. <laughs> come on, Tony. <laughs> Uh, Mark, you were listen. You're part of one of our favorite episodes and one of the yeah. most acclaimed episodes of all time. And you know, say what you will, you you played a big part in that. Um, even Thank even you. if you had a few lines, yeah. I mean, like I said, your impact, whether it's a short line in Seinfeld or Enrico Palazzo and uh, Naked Gun, it's uh, you make an impact. So I just we want you to know that, and you've had a great career. And we're 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 glad you got to spend a few minutes with us tonight. So thank you so much, Mark. Oh, I, it's, it's, you guys have been fun. Thank you. Sorry about the, blah, 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 st- you know, stuttering or whatever. It's going to be 110 here tomorrow. Oh, no, man. 108, only 100. So I'm going to fry what's left of my brain cells completely tomorrow. Listen, Mark, <laughs> uh, go, go to the unless, deli. Unless I stand there. Pick up some pops. Uh, that'll cool you down. Tommy sandwich. <laughs> That's exactly what I need. Put it in the fridge for a little bit, get it nice and cool, and uh, and chill out. I, you know, I still haven't had any uh, chocolate vodka. I guess I need to. Oh uh, man. Finally, have one. Yes, we got to <laughs> get you one. <laughs> I, I tell you what, if I run across a chocolate vodka, I will film myself eating it and what my reaction is, and send you a copy of the video. <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. This was a lot of fun, man. I've had a lot of fun. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Cheers, Mark.